You seem pretty cool. Are you a man that gets psyched, or do you keep yourself pretty much under control? Do you feel the driver's going to be an element in this uh, in this problem? Uh, I try to stay cool, you know. I'm nervous just like everybody else when we go into it. Dennis Bach, there's no way you're going to psych him. He's been doing the thing for years, and I don't think he can get to me. I've been driving for years, too, so we'll see what happens. Over those years, uh, met a lot of good people, had a lot of fun, um, had a lot of people help me along the way. Uh. as you get older you remember less and less but uh, it was I, I remember a lot of great times uh Started off in the sportsman categories, had a uh, flathead Ford D dragster, and first time I ever drove it, I, I thought, my gosh, I can't drive something this fast. It accelerated so rapidly. And I stood down the top end and thought, you sissy, I, there's guys that run a lot quicker than you. I can handle this. So by the time the guys came down the, the crew cab, I thought, oh, it's a piece of cake. into a sea dragster and those were the days when when you ran off uh, the national records not indexes and, and uh, you'd run home every Wednesday to see if the national dragster was there to, to uh, read as to whether or not somebody had hit your your national record and, and your handicap had changed And then uh, 1971, um, went into Top Fuel. Um, first, uh, first outing in Top Fuel was uh, uh, one that you always like to forget, but I crashed the car, first round of eliminations in Mission British Columbia, it was a front engine car. And uh, laying in the hospital bed, we decided to order a brand new uh, back motor car. And, uh, and we did that and, and continued running the rest, uh, or near the end of the year. And we were uh, mediocrely successful, but uh, you know had a good car, um, and made good relations o over the years, and it was just a great time. Send them on their way. Semi final round is out in front. It was briefly Terry Cap, and then Graham Light surged on as Cap had an engine go away. Six and seven, one hundredths of a second for the quarter mile, and watch again how Graham Light made it to the finals. He smoked the tires at first, then makes a comeback, and that means that Graham Light will face Dennis Baca in the World Finals here in Ontario. Here we had a very successful outing, both cars. We, um, along the way, beat Don Garlitz, beat Terry Cap, another strong Canadian with the Wheeler Dealer car, and, and made it to the final. You know, and both cars were in the final. And I remember being strapped in the car, racing against Dennis Baca in the final. And in front of me was, was Gordy Bonin and, and Don Perdome. And if you look at the numbers of during eliminations, 
Prudhomme was uh, very consistent running in those days, 6 O's, 6 6 I think, and uh, run after run, and Gordy was about 6.20. So the numbers certainly favored uh, Prudhomme. Uh, our numbers, we were running uh, Baca, who was running uh, high 580s, low 590s, we were running the same numbers. Uh, so we were, we were matched up pretty close, and, and I watched Gordy go out, and Prudhomme smoked tires, and Gordy won the race. And I thought, wow, I mean, you know, the, the odds on favor to win was, was uh, or the ones with a better chance was us. And I saw my teammate go out there and I said, man, we're going to have a double bubble up uh, championship here. But it wasn't to be. We did the burnout and it uh, split an oil line on the burnout and uh, we shut it off on the starting line and, and Dennis singled for the win. But, uh, you know, just we made it a lot further than... Uh, than most of the competitors out there. So, so we were happy, we were certainly happy for our teammate, but to get both cars in the final, we thought was quite an accomplishment. This could be, and there's problems. There are problems on Graham Light's machine. It is being rolled back and he's taking off those fireproof plugs. After coming all this way, the Canadian Graham Light is going to be left standing at the altar. On terrible break, he's on, adjusting his helmet now to take it off. The machine is being rolled back. Dennis Buckle will have to make the run, but it's predetermined. All he has to do is come through the quarter mile block, and we have a new finalist to win it all here today in the World Finals. He's going all the way, though. He's going hard. That's impressive, Ken. He didn't have to. He could have coasted down through there, but he'd stay down it all the way. Look at that time. Five and 97, one hundredths of a second for the old 440 as Dennis Baca has won in the World Finals, and there you see the machine. Well, I think anybody in the sport is competitive, so were we competitive? Sure we were. Um, but, you know, we, we had uh, some, some good crew chiefs over the years and, and ran a respectable car, and when we got beat, we got beat. And um, the, the system didn't beat us, we beat ourselves. And, and you'd uh, lick your wounds and go on to the next race and try and do better. Well, Graham Light, a long way to come for disaster right at what could have been the brink of your greatest success. Well, that's true, Ken. You know, it's one of those unforeseeable things. Uh, in the burnout, the car broke an oil line. It's nobody's fault. Uh, but we were happy to get into the final. You know, we could have lost first round or maybe we couldn't have even qualified. So we're happy that the funny car went out in front of us and won. We were hoping for an all bubble up win here, but. Uh, we're runner-up, and that's the way it goes. What's the emotion that you go through when you come from Edmonton, Alberta, and you've worked your way through all these eliminations and come right down to the moment, and then it's all for naught? Well, you're kind of disappointed, but you know, I'm happy to be in the final. There was a, a lot of tough com competitors here. A lot of tough cars didn't even qualify. Uh, on the way up, we beat people like Hank Johnson and Don Garlitz and Terry Cap, and I mean, these people run super, you know. And, uh, we tried to look at the attitude it was just another round, you know, just another car to race and just continue what we've been doing and maybe we can beat him too. We'd obviously like to have won, but we're happy to be runner-up. Well, we're awfully sorry you didn't get a chance to make it down to the other end of this quarter-mile strip, but the attitude of Graham Light to us represents the attitude of everything we've seen here in watching these 13th Annual World Finals. These people care and they're sensitive and they're great competitors and it's been one great time for us to cover for the first time for CBS the 13th World Finals of Drag Racing. For Brock Yates, I'm Ken Squire. <laughs> yeah, well, that was short-lived. We had a movie in, uh, oh gosh, in the late 70s, I guess, uh, it shot at my racetrack in Edmonton, Edmonton International Speedway movie called Fast Company and, and it was a fun summer. It was fun to watch all the special effects. Uh, we, Gordy did some driving uh, in, in the funny car. I drove the dragster and some scenes but um, they gave me a part at the end of the movie. I think they felt sorry for me for occupying my racetrack all summer. Um, so they gave me a little part and it took about four, four takes before I got the wording right. But uh, anyway, it was, it was a fun experience. Funny car, driven by Gary the Black Smith Black. Going up against the former Fasco Firebird funny car. Hi, Gary. Howdy. How are we doing? Good. Who's going to call it? I guess that's us. Call it. 
Heads. 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 Good luck, guys. Uh, we seem to have an apparent malfunction of our time equipment up here in the tower. Now, there seems to be a little confusion down there on the track as to which car has got which lane. Really? Right lane. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What's this? Hey, man, we screwed up. There wasn't supposed to be a toss. Vasco rules are the slow car gets the lane choice. No way, man! No way! You can't do that! What are you trying to... Hey, you can't... Hey. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Come okay, on, okay. Come on! Come on. Man, I got you. Come on. Okay. You get in there and you drive this thing. You get in with me. Well, my line was that I had to go down and, and get in between two drivers and tell them that Fast Company, which was the name of the, the sponsor of the race, their rules were that the lane choice is determined by a, um, a coin toss. And uh, camera's going, lights, camera, action. I run in, I says, hold it, hold it. Lane choice is determined by a toy toss. The director, cut, cut, cut. What's the matter? He said, coin toss. It's coin toss. All right. So take two. Lights, camera, action. Stop, stop. Lane choice determined by a coin toss. And I got it in my mind that, that I, I couldn't say coin toss. I said coin toss. And on the third time, I decided without telling the director, I was just going to change the words. And came back. I, I says, lane choice determined by the flip of a coin. That's what's in the movie. I think any time you can turn your hobby into uh, your livelihood, I, I, I think you should be happy every day. And, and no matter what you do, you have bad days and good days. Uh, but I was a hobby racer to start, and uh, from there became a track operator, owner, and, and then a race official with NHRA since 1984. And, and you know, again, a lot of people helped me get to this position over the years, um, but it, it was my hobby first, and I've turned that into a living, and, and it just, it, you know, it makes things like Father's Day, uh, you're not at home with your family, which you miss, but um, it, it, at times it's not like work, it's, it's your hobby. <laughs> 